question dealing with anthropology. How did the distinct races come into existence in a short time frame if the Earth is only a few thousand years old? The issue of races is covered for 15 minutes on my video, and you give me two minutes to answer this uh, on my video seven. But uh, there are four theories of where the different races, and I even hate to use the word race. Uh, there's only one race. It's called the human race. There are different skin colors. You know, I would give you pictures of uh, different colors of cows and say, you know, they all have, they're, they're still cows, okay? They look the same in the meat locker, and they taste the same on the hamburger. So um, <laughs> it's just the skin color. I think probably the most logical explanation for where the skin colors come from is the Tower of Babel, because the Bible says in Genesis 10 and 11, after the flood, God divided the world by their languages, in their families, and in their nations. Apparently, the nations or nationalities were created. Twice in the book of Psalms, it mentions Egypt is the land of Ham. Most Bible scholars teach that the children of Ham, one of Noah's sons, went to Egypt and Africa, was colonized by the Hamites, or the black people are the descendants of Ham. Japheth is the father of the Europeans, and Shem is the father of the Orientals, the three basic racial groups, if you can call them that, or ethnic groups. Now, since then, there's been a whole lot of mixing going on, and so there's a lot of different varieties and shades in between. But basically, I believe I could say from the scriptures, it started off as three basic uh, ethnic groups. Now, getting three different ethnic groups, uh, Orientals, uh, Caucasians, and blacks, from Noah is so minor compared to getting the blacks, orientals, and whites from a rock. I mean, it's so minor. I wouldn't worry about it. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, as far as races, well, that's just an example of microevolution. What happened is the human race started in Africa, and you had dark skin because of the sun. And as some of the races fanned out, you had the lighter skin. You've probably heard this story. And so it's just an example of microevolution. You extend that over a long period of time, and you have, you have evolution, you have changes that compound, and you have macroevolution. Matter of fact, there again is an abundance of evidence. This is a trilobite fossil. It lived hundreds of millions of years ago for hundreds of millions of years itself, and then it became extinct. extinct. The planet is littered with this kind of thing. You can go to the La Brea Tar Pits and see the fossils there. Many fossils and many evidences. And again, research this for yourself. I would just again say the evidence is overwhelming scientifically. That's why it's taught in all our schools, uh, public institutions, and supported by the courts. As far as um, this country, this is a free country. I believe very strongly in the principles of this country where we have a chance to debate. This is by no means the USSR, a totalitarian state. And the very fact that evolution has withstood the scrutiny is a testament of its validity and its truth. This is by no means the USSR, and evolution is by no means um, a religion. It, it is a science and has been supported many times. Getting back to the issue of stars, since I have a little time, uh, we have observed stars, and again, we're learning more and more, Dr. Hovind mentioned in his opening statement about evidences. The evidence keeps coming, building a mountain of evidence for evolution. We have seen stars form in our latest infrared telescopes. We had one, uh, an earlier version, we have a more modern one, we see it. We see it, I believe it's the Eagle Nebula, we actually see the formation. And as far as blowing up, even if God created it without it coming together, it's still only going to last a million years. It cannot blow up sooner than a million years. It's basic, basic law of physics, very well understood. Beginning with Dr. Hoven, I'd like to extend the evidentiary argumentation for the case of microevolution for two minutes on both sides. Okay. Uh, for microevolution, let me get my slides back on there. Uh, he's mentioned several times about dogs coming from wolves. I would agree. Here's an article from uh, BBC News just recently. Uh, the origin of dogs is traced. It says, it looks as if 95% of current dog came from just three original founding females. Hmm. It says, dogs today come in all sizes and sh all shapes and sizes, but scientists believe they evolved from just a handful of wolves tamed by humans living in or near China less than 15,000 years ago. Well, they're getting closer. Actually, they all didn't evolve from nothing. They're still, they still contain the same gene code, and uh, all dogs and wolves and coyotes are still interfertile. The Bible says they can bring forth after their kind. See, a dog and a wolf can mate and bring forth. A dog and a pine tree cannot. Okay, they're a different kind. So I think it's quite obvious where the kind level is in most cases. Okay, a child can tell you. He mentioned about the trilobite. Uh, he said, this is a trilobite which lived millions of years ago. Well, no, this is a trilobite. 
That's the fact. And then he went into the fantasy part of it lived millions of years ago. He mixed fantasy and fact together. Here's a human shoe print. Uh, the guy stepped on a trilobite, two of them actually. This was uh, documented by uh, Doling, Utah's Geological Survey, said this is not a fake, it's a legitimate footprint where the guy stepped on a true trilobite. Actually, trilobites, they say, live millions of years ago. I have a hard time believing that because a uh, trilobite has the most complicated eye ever. If the trilobite lived in the Cambrian period, which didn't exist, by the way, how did it have the most complicated eye ever in the history of the universe already on the first animal to evolve, or one of the first ones to evolve? Incredibly complex eye. Um, trilobites are not index fossils. There probably are some still alive. There are quite a variety of trilobites. There are st some still alive. There certainly are isopods, which are probably a degenerate trilobite, because instead of having three lobes, they have one lobe. Up in northern Alaska at Prudhoe Bay, they suck them into their water filter all the time. I've got a jar in my museum. Come to Dinosaur Adventure Land and you can see some trilobites or isopod, Baltic isopods that were alive when they arrived in Pensacola. We couldn't keep them alive. We don't have 20 below zero temperatures, but anyway, they're, they're there. Thank you. All right. Um, well, again, Dr. Hovind just mentioned how dogs have evolved, and you can see it yourself. They reproduce 30 times faster approximately than man. So if in several thousand years we can see that evolution of a dog, and all, it's a question of semantics. You see the breeds, you see the changes yourself. Uh, whether something has changed from one species to another. But certainly the breeds have, and certainly there's a great, diff a great change in several thousand years. You extend that 30 times to the order of hundreds of thousands, you can easily see where a man has evolved from something like Homo erectus. Again, I encourage you to go to my links page and look at this and study it for yourself. Uh, related point, again, the overwhelming scientific evidence supports this. That's why it's taught. That's why it's went up for... For many years, I mean, this has been debated, as you know, since the Scump Scopus Monkey trial and before. Um, creation is only one minor foothold, which were often reversed, like in the Kansas uh, school board. And as far as Dr. Hovind taking issue with me about the uh, numbers I quoted, again, you can research this yourself. I don't have time for brevity. I did, bring, I did actually print out the references and the actual uh, report the Gallup report where there are the actual statistics here. They're talking about the general population. And scientists, for obvious, I can't go into details, but you can research that yourself. Um, as far as I keep getting back to this little bits to use up my time, as far as star formation, it's extremely cold in space. And Boyle's law and Brownian motion, they have to do with heat energy moving molecules apart. Molecules move very slowly when they have hardly any energy. It's easy to imagine gravity causing them to condense. We actually have observed it with our latest infrared satellites and the space telescope. So, and again, stars blow up. They blow up. It takes a million for the most massive stars of 100 times or 200 times the mass of the sun. It still takes a million years. It's very well understood, the physics. It's like putting gas in your car. You know how long Time's the gas up. is going to run. Okay.